So um, this is a, a, a scanning exercise. Uh, so you pick a part of your, normally when we, you touch your, your, your partner's fascia and you touch the ground, you're gonna feel the, um, the, the easiest tension line is what you're gonna feel. So when you push, whatever how his reaction is, that's what you're sensing, and then that's where you find a space. So what we're gonna do now, instead of taking the easiest pathway, we're gonna go section by section. So touch the shoulders and scapula area, put a bit of relaxation into it, and then rotate the opposite way and come in underneath the, the rib cage and hook under the rib cage a little bit. And then re relax and release that. Go down on, around the hip and kidney area. And uh, when you pull down, you wanna feel the hip and then hook under and up around the kidneys, create a little bit of relaxation, and then connect those areas. You know, go shoulder, rib, hip, and, and, and relax. And each time you feel and relax, when you relax, you feel more. So you, re, you remap and go, oh yeah, there's more there, because the mind has gone in and, and, and uh, generated influence. And as soon as the mind influences something, more information becomes available to you. It's like, the, the, your ability to map what you feel increases. And then work all the way down to your partner's uh, base. And once you've done that, then touch the base and so like, oh wow, there's a lot more there than there was before. Uh, but if you're, uh, thanks Dinesh, if you're always just following the, the available line, you don't really build much more beyond that. But if you go on relaxing each part and playing with it and rotating the, the joints and feeling more stuff, releasing it, getting more data, and you touch, then ah, there's a lot more than, than you originally thought. And that, if you're in the healing um, field, to be able to go in and, and put your mind in different tension points and release it, it's, uh, it, it really builds uh, that, that skill up. When you're going through, if you're a very visual person, you might see traumas like emotions, and a uh, person might have been in a car accident, and you know, um, had one student who had a seatbelt mark across their, their, their chest with a seatbelt pulled in. And then when you release it, you see the car accident. Go, oh, geez, what in the hell was that? And that's that moment everything pulls in and out. So uh, if you're a, a visual person, you'll see the visuals. If you're uh, more um, in the class sentience, it'll, it'll, you'll feel the trauma rather than see it. You'll, you go, what was that? You feel it, but you don't get the visual. Uh, whichever one comes through, uh, you should journal it straight away and, and by journaling you open the door to more, that's if you want more uh, of that sensitivity. Uh, uh, I used to get a lot of smells from people uh, and, uh, uh, and I was like, what is that? You tap into someone's liver and, and, and it's like, Ugh, what's that weird smell in their liver? You know, and then different organs have different smells. Uh, it didn't really match the smells of Chinese medicine because that's what led me there to start with. They're very, very different. But uh, mapping all that out in, in, uh, in your, uh, your approach, it's, it's, it'll help with healing. You don't really need those for, uh, for the martial side, but uh, for the healing side, definitely do. And then um, once you've gone up and down, touched the base, and you've gathered more, more data around touching someone's bridge and feeling their root, uh, then um, uh, ask your partner, say, I feel a lot of tension in your hip, what's happening there? And uh, they'll fill in all the gaps what you can't, can't uh, feel. And then touch the hip again and uh, take the data they've given you, what you feel in the story, will unpack itself. And the next time uh, you touch someone's hip, there's this unpacking that wants to happen so you see more of that person's story. So sometimes they just need to give you a little bit of information and then all of a sudden you see a bunch of other information connected to what they just gave you. So they, they, by them communicating it, they're emotionally opening and then your listening feels more and it has this reflective effect of building more intuition, not so much in the person, not just the person you're just working with, but the next person, that you have a feeling of, ah, oh, when a person opens up emotionally, expresses themselves, there's this feeling of opening, and you go in and you open that feeling, and then all the information appears, if that makes sense. So each person you work with builds a bridge to being better at the next person to open them up, and then you'll need less and less uh, verbal communication with the person, 
and you bypass that and you just, when a person expresses themselves verbally, there's a pattern that happens where they open release and you just go to the pattern, open release them without having to ask, if that, if that makes sense. And you find your way of doing this. If you're journaling uh, uh, what you're doing, the results you're getting, you naturally find your way of developing the skills. It's, 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 it's written in your journal. When you contemplate your journal later and go, oh, of course, so there it is. I wrote it right down how to do it. And, and you figure out your way. And everyone's way is different. Uh, it, it's just a matter of connecting the dots. And the journal just gives you all the dots. And you just connect them and figure out the causation chains and your method of doing it. And the reason why I say your method of doing it is everybody's skills are so unique. Some people are much more clairvoyant. Some people are much more clairaudient, clairsentient. Uh, and and inside of those is so many different types of clairvoyance and types of clairsentience. And, uh, and everyone has different types of resistance and different types of openness within those skills as well. So uh, you have to map out your own way of doing things. But there's a certain obviousness if you read your journal after you've um, written it down during practice and you read it later, it's sort of like, of course, it's right there, I wrote it down. And your unconscious trying to tell you how to, how to practice. Uh, very often you can't see it in the moment, but afterwards it's, it's, it's very, very transparent. Okay, have a play.